Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Sheila Gunn-Reed for Rebel News and I just got out of Webex Provincial Court here in Alberta where Provincial Court Judge Robert Shagas handed down a decision on whether or not the charter rights of Pastor James Coates were violated stemming from his arrest and incarceration on February 16th. Now, Pastor James Coates and his Grace Life Church, for those of you who don't know, came under Alberta Health Services and police surveillance back in the winter when complaints alleged they were non-compliant with the public health orders to restrict worship services to just 15% of capacity, as well as failing to adhere to masking and social distancing requirements. Coates was ticketed and then subsequently arrested and released in his office February 7th. February 14th, he held another non-compliant service. Coates turned himself into authorities February 16th and from there he remained in jail for 35 days. Coates was not able to qualify for bail because he said the bail conditions put him in the impossible situation of violating his conscience in favor of personal liberty as the bail conditions required him to not give non-compliant worship services, but also to not even attend non-compliant worship services, something he says violates his religious liberty. Now, after Coates was released, then the province seized the church property in a pre-dawn raid. They still have control of the property and the church congregation has gone into worshiping underground in secret. Coates went to trial May 3rd, at which point his lawyers from the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, Leighton Gray and James Kitchen, made, in my opinion, very strong and compelling arguments that Coates' charter rights were violated. The constitutionality of the public health orders will be determined at a later date. Today's hearing was a ruling on whether or not the enforcement of the law violated Coates' charter rights. Judge Shagas agreed that Coates did hold and does hold deep religious convictions that Sunday worship is a matter of obedience to Christ and that Coates defied the law because Coates felt compelled to comply with God and that Coates became convinced that the government's ongoing response to COVID-19 was an overreaction. However, Shagas found that none of Coates' charter rights were violated by the enforcement of the public health orders. Shaga said the ticketing process was quick and respectful, but it was Coates who brought attention to the presence of the police in the church. Now, I've personally been to Grace Life Church. There's no way the police can enter it without the congregation noticing. In fact, I've been there when the police tried to enter during Easter services. Judge Shagas ruled that freedom of expression was not violated by limiting the method and means of worship. Shagas also ruled that section 176 of the criminal code, that's the one that prevents the disruption of a religious service as it's occurring, does not dig a moat around places of worship to prevent enforcement of laws. Shagas also ruled that Coates's right to religious liberty was not violated when Coates was forced to agree with bail conditions that would violate his conscience or be forced to stay in jail, stating that it was all Coates's choice to make in the end. Now, trial isn't over yet. It's simply been adjourned to continue to proceed on June 30th, now that all these issues of charter violations have been completely resolved. One thing I should note here too, the Crown Prosecutor, Karen Thorsrud, remains in secret. She is simply identifying herself as the public health prosecutor. So you can force a church underground and then you can hide your identity from the scrutiny of people who would find your actions shameful. That's the legal system here in Alberta. So I guess that's it, friends. You can lock up a pastor for 35 days in Alberta. You can take away his church, fence it off, force the congregation underground. And if it's all done in the name of public safety, I guess that's just fine in the eyes of the Alberta government and what we call a legal system around here. All this though, from the very same politicians who would be the first in line to scold the Chinese government for doing to Christians in Hong Kong, that which they are doing to Christians here. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Pastor James Coates is being represented by the very capable lawyers from the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms. However, at Rebel News, we are helping approximately 1,200 pastors, business owners, and regular people fight their lockdown tickets in court at no cost to them by putting them in touch with top criminal lawyers 
and civil litigators. If you'd like to help us help them, please donate today at fightthefines.com and all donations there now qualify for a charitable tax receipt through the Democracy Fund.